Well, that's a tough one. I think we could get a pullback at any time. But one of the things that I looked at in the data today is that the bond market appears to be looking through Delta and the employment number, which is a very good sign. And, you know, I think everybody believes, and we're certainly in this camp, that it's not the end of the cycle. This is this is artificial. It's it's Delta based and the tactical folks folks uh, like John will trade will trade that data and they should and, and they should. Um, because there's money to be made, and you're seeing a lot of sector in style rotation underneath the surface. I think you also have the Fed, which appears to be a, a little bit in a box, right? A a anytime they're going to step back, I think there's going to be volatility created by that. And I, I think this latest data gives them more room not to step back because it's it's kind of not a normal environment right now. But if you're looking kind of longer term, I think you have to stay the course, you have to stay bullish. Profits are growing. That's generally bullish for stocks. Um, I would say what you have to focus, though, on, Brian, is the potential. And I think uh, there's probably not a lot of multiple expansion left in this type of environment. I would be more focused on markets delivering what looks like traditional profit growth, and that's the types of returns you can, you can expect. Yeah. Well, John Najarian, I got to give you credit. By the way, I'm mad at your brother because he said that Minnesota would cover last night. They didn't by half a point at Hertz. Um, uh, but I'll give you credit, Dang. which is that on Monday, oh, okay. <clears throat> boom. Yeah, <clears throat> I won't eat this weekend. On Monday, you said that the jobs market was going to be weak. You, you called it. Um, so good mm -hmm. call there. How much does it alter the Fed's thinking, though? Again, because the data and again, going the, the extended unemployment benefits, whatever you think of them, they roll off uh, on Monday. And the Fed has basically said they're going to have to ride this out for a few months. I mean, when will we get data that I don't want to say actually matters, but is, is cleaner? The data give us a more real sense of what's happening under the hood. Well, thank you, Brian. Um, I think uh, September 22nd, uh, that jobs report today took uh, that September 22nd uh, Fed announcement off the table. Um, there, there will be a Fed announcement, but it will not be that tapering has begun. That will start, I believe, Brian, in November after we have uh, basically September and October data. We don't have a meeting um, in October. So after we have data from both the September employment as well as October, that's when I think we get it. And to your point, Brian, rolling off of these enhanced benefits as well as, and that was a great point, uh, about the back to school, allowing parents to get back to work um, in a more meaningful way. I think that uh, those two things are what's going to drive a much better jobs market, quite frankly, Brian, um, in this actual September report, which will be the first week in October, and then the October report, which will be the first week in November. So I think the Fed makes that announcement, Brian, in November. I do not disagree with Shannon that um, that will be a, yeah. not, not a nothing burger. We'll probably see a tick up in rates, but <laughs> I'm not looking for a massive jump in rates at all. We're going to taper for months and months, um, and then perhaps in 2023 they'll actually start raising rates. 